So what'd you think of the old Rasputin? Interesting character, huh? When I get back, I'm going to play for you. Actually, maybe I'll put this up on Schoology, one of the great historical songs. Nowadays, so many, so many kids know it because it's been made popular in some of those dance uh, games, Dance Dance Revolution and such. But I'll, I'll share with this one it re the great song about Rasputin, the Russian love machine. <laughs> they talk about him, but it's great, the idea about how he couldn't die and such. But anyway, let's fast forward. R like we see, Rasputin is... Uh, does get killed do do things get fixed and the answer there would be no um nick uh, nicholas returns from the war comes back and realizes that he has lost the the will of the people lost the mandate he could choose to be able to take the, the soldiers that he has and be able to turn and try to hold on to power but he doesn't he abdicates he steps down and which is really interesting because we have ourselves a bloodless revolution we have the monarch step down. In many ways, he actually enjoyed it. Hey, he gets to spend time with his family. He's at home. Here he is shoveling snow. Really interesting photograph here. Uh, and another government is put into place, a temporary government. Um, um, and so now what? We call this, uh, there's going to be two revolutions in Russia. And, and, and the issues that we learned about before that sparked the revolution, is it domestic issues? We, uh, the question here is going to ask, which one of these issues that helped brought about the Russian Revolution in the beginning, did this new government not really address at all? And the answer to that would be the war. They made the decision, actually they did address it, they chose to stay in the war. And that war is going to be a is, is going to be a huge toll on the Russian uh, people. And so they're going to make, the, the Russian people don't want to be in the war anymore. And so then we're going to have the new group uh, going to come in and demand for a second revolution. So, and that is what we can kind of see here. We are going to see that this Russian revolution, originally you had a period of a monarchy. So the first revolution is going to bring in this kind of a democratic government. Now, if you remember our, uh, what you call it, our... Um, our pendulum so kind of like a pendulum over here under the rule of the czar we are way to the right hand side a reactionary government ruled by the czar we're gonna move this over in the first um, revolution to sort of a moderate government a Duma or a um, uh, much like a parliament will be put into place the issue though they don't deal with the war it's gonna be a failure this particular one and it's gonna shift over even more so like I said provisional government here's a poster of the day War continues. Russians want out. There's no changes. It appears like it's a gov it's a democracy, but not nothing really has changed much in the daily lives. So it's like a revolution in which that not much we don't see any change. So there's going to be more just you know demand for change. That begins this party, a new group. These are the people who are reading Karl Marx. These were the ones who were impassioned by the um 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 uh, by, by the uh, so the, the socialist ideas of the day they will give themselves the name the Bolsheviks means majority they want to turn Russia into a socialist state and here's another thing too not necessarily just Russia they are looking to take their ideas where else and that is um, to spread beyond Russia we're going to talk about that a little bit later not an assembly not a Duma they think that the government and the country should be controlled by the people who manage this and this was a key part of uh, Marx's idea the workers of the world unite was one of his phrases so they believe that the country should be run by the workers and the soldiers now we're getting into the idea of what that hammer and sickle is all about so if um, now we're gonna have the second revolution which is really odd it is it's called the October Revolution the weird part is is it happened in the month of November and this is confusing but it's a great example of what Russia was like Russia was like we said behind the rest of Europe, and so f and in another reason that another example of them being so far behind is that they had not started using the same calendar that the rest of the world was using. They were using an earlier ex a calendar. Well, today R Russia has since switched over, and we all use the same calendar. But in on on their calendar, it was the month of October, the end of October. But reality, it was really in November. Regardless of what it was, the October is an interesting term connected to the, the, this Russian past. The October Revolution is going to bring a new group. There will be a military coup overthrown by this Bolshevik army led by a guy by the name of Trotsky, which you should be familiar with. Um, and again, another bloodless, bloodless revolution. So they go into the provisional government, the government steps down, and you have leaders like Trotsky come into place. And this guy, Lenin, now 
what do you think some of these new gov the new government is going to address and that is going to be ending the involvement in World War II and now real socialist change here giving land to the uh, to, to the people done with the idea of private ownership of land. For those of you who did Animal Farm, this is the story of, of Animal Farm. So now, second revolution is going to come into place. This is the communist government. So now the shift, we go from reactionary through the moderate, all the way shifting way out to the other side, extreme, extreme left side. So the man we really need to focus on, Vladimir Lenin. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If we have time uh, after this uh, Lecture, I'm going to have you guys watch a, a video on Lenin in class, whatever time is remaining. A little bit about his biography and the revolution there. Um, uh, he will be the first leader. He is the man truly behind all of this. He uh, He's the one who takes Marx's ideas and creates his own version of Karl Marx's. That's what we will call Leninism. That is Marx's communist ideas but remember it wouldn't fit in it, it, Marx believed in an industrialized state so Lenin is going to modify that and put it into what it would be like for a more of an agrarian society to be able to have that that is Lenin's idea now Leninism will also will, will modify and change once he comes into power because of the realization how do can we really make this work all right side note what happens after Lenin takes over here's the third conflict you had the one revolution the second revolution and now those who originally supported the monarch after the first revolution want back. So now there's going to be a push to get the Romanovs back into place. So there's a civil war in place. This civil war will be with the Bolsheviks. They'll take the color red, and they'll take the supporters of the Tsar and call him white. We don't need to know a whole lot about this, but realizing that this is going to keep Russia in turmoil three years. And the bigger issue is what to do with that family, right, the Romanovs. If, if the whites won, or at least can get them back, get the Roman, their hands on the Romanists, they could put them back in and at least declare victory. So you can see where this is going. Something needs to happen to the Romanov family. They start moving them deeper into exile, realizing that, um, that any attempt at putting him, or unfortunately any of the children on the throne, would defeat all of the uh, things that the that the Bolsheviks had moved forward to. So they're ultimately taken here in one of these very much discussed and talked about and debated, uh, not necessarily debated, but talked about peri uh, events in history, was um, the, uh, the end of the Romanovs. In the middle, they're kept here, and then in the middle of the night, they're woken up, and them and a few of their servants were taken down to the basement. And here's a picture of the basement. In the basement, the family is lined up, and the uh, soldiers are ordered to say that in view of the fact that your relative, relatives try to be able to get you out, and those relatives like we saw in, in England and such, the Soviets decided to sentence them to death, and they open up and, and begin to shoot and, um, and uh, execute all of the Romanovs. It, after the execution, things get a little weird. Is what happens to them? They decide to, they they realize that they need to hide the bodies. And this long, complicated but very discussed story is whatever happened to all of them because they were never found. Long story short, they were found. Here's a picture of of the remains. We have found and tested them today. But for a long time, when they were when the bodies were not found, people wondered what happened. And there's a really odd story about this woman named Anna Anderson, a woman who tried to kill herself, jumped off a bridge, and then when they pulled her out of the water, uh, she was speaking um, and incoherent and wouldn't talk, and then when they, they finally were convinced her to speak, she said that actually that she was one of the daughters of the Romanov family, and a name that you may all be familiar with, and her name is Anastasia. They have made movies and cartoons based on this, because she said, I have had, I can't remember my past, and I do think that I may have been you know, the, I escaped that evening, and so the, the this whole day idea is a very magical story about a princess who could have escaped an awful past, ultimately to be reunited and to come back. And this woman tr told everybody that this was her real story. I am Anastasia, and this and 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 even the members of the uh, of the family it was, it was was undecided about. Some believed her, and some thought it was a hoax. Um, there's all. Look at this. We're raising Rasputin in the back. Um, but interesting is like, look at here. We do have some evidence to, to, to sort of disprove this. The idea about the connected and disconnected earlobes uh, from um, Anastasia and the picture of this woman, Anna Anderson. Um, they have since, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they have they finally uncovered the bodies. They found where they were originally where they were all hidden. They have dug dug them all up. 
the family's act, the family actually what happened to them is what the Bolsheviks feared originally is here we are in 1998 and look what ultimately happens to them the family is canonized and be, they're all turned into saints in the Russian Orthodox Church so with all of the bones and all of the, 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 the this answer finally put together that the family was executed what's the deal with Anna Anderson well they did find out about her they did find out that she was, was a hoax that after her, her death some of her um, tissues and hair were kept and they were, did a DNA test. We do believe that the, uh, that woman is 100% a hoax of what it was, but a really sort of fanciful story. Let's fast forward a little bit here. So what we really need to do, besides those things, is understand what this transformation of Russia. The Bolsheviks are going to turn Russia into something brand new, a new country, the USSR, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. They'll change their name to the communists. The Lenin's going to take over. He'll take over the country. I remember it was supposed to be the workers, but Lenin and his group says, well, not everybody can do that, so our group is going to take over and be able to run this in your behalf. And not many people really realize it at the time, but this is just replacing one form of an absolute rule of a czar with a new one, this new communist party. And this is what the, the, the USSR stands for. The Socialist Republics, well, this is what it is. That's Russia, 11 here in red. And what do they do? Look what they take over all of these other different regions and such. And this has been, it will be an issue that we'll talk about later, like the Ukraine right here, the, the Crimea. This will become a Republic of the Soviet Union. Belarus and all these other ones, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, all of these, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, all become part of the Soviet Union with who making all the decisions they do. So the issues that we have about Ukraine and the Crimea is that some of them want to be part of their own country and some of them want to still be, be connected to, the, to Russia. And so this is an interesting legacy that's going to last. Here is the hammer and sickle like I talked about. The goal then ultimately for this new Soviet Union is to be able to move forward, make a government in control of the, of the economy and make the farms no longer owned by individuals. Let's have the government in charge. And that's kind of what we see with this, is that the government was going to control all of this. And here's Lenin, the leader of everything, Lenin. Lenin modifies his idea of Leninism, allows this thing called the new economic policy, which you should have read about, which is weird because they realized instantly that the idea of communism is, is not working um, in terms of... Um, the agricultural production of um, getting the food, so they they allowed, hey, some peasants can grow their own crops and make some profit. When people question Lenin, that looks like a little bit of capitalism. You know, anybody who disagreed with him, things, uh, uh, a dissent was not, was not appreciated. And so Lenin squashed all of his opponents. And so you start to see Lenin transform himself into sort of a mythological uh, uh, a figure of this new uh, of this new Soviet Union, and here's a here's a poster that says Lenin lives, Lenin li will live, but actually, guess what? Lenin's not going to live. He's going to die at a relatively young age of 54. He's only going to be in power for three years. He has several strokes, but in many ways, he can be more powerful in death, because he is going to transform himself into this great father. Gets a cult-like following and adoration. It's still seen today, even though. They're not even communist anymore. And look at this. He's still there today. He's not even, they never bury the guy. They mummified him. You can go and visit Lenin. He is here. The crazy part, thinking about Russia today, Russia is no longer the Soviet Union. They have just gotten rid of all the ideas of Lenin. But Lenin, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looked like when he was first put inside Lenin's tomb. Right here is Lenin's tomb, right next to St. Basil's. And look at here in the 19, uh, after his death in the 1950s. People lined up for, you know, huge lines just to be able to see him and pay his last respects. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is still him today. Here is still Lenin's tomb. Lines aren't as big, but you can still go and visit him today. Russia has to deal with the question, and they and they are just letting it stay. What do we do with him? The symbol of, is he the symbol of the Soviet Union? Many of them in Russia see him really as the symbol of a modern Russia. And the Soviet Union, uh, the idea of of that system was just sort of an experiment, but Lenin is really the idea of a modern new Russia. So the next question is who takes over, and this again is Animal Farm all wrapped up in. You have Stalin versus Trotsky. You have the bright intellectual, the leader of the army, and I don't even know what to describe him. Just Stalin, just a guy who has no real abilities, but somebody who was able to work the, work the system. And there's a great quote from Lenin that shows, I suggest that the Soviets 
think about removing Stalin from that position and put somebody else in his place, somebody who differs from him as being more, uh, more tolerant, more loyal, more polite, and more considerate. Lenin didn't even realize, realize that Stalin is not the guy to be able to get put in place, but he does. One of the biggest issues is, was that Trotsky was focused, one, on a worldwide revolution, spreading communism everywhere, and also not necessarily deal with the internal politics, whereas Stalin realized that I can get those members of the Soviets, all the different Soviet leaders, members of the Bolshevik and the Communist Party, get them to vote for me, and be able to use backhanded tricks and techniques to be able to get people on his side. And ultimately, Trotsky finds himself the man who he thought he should lead, Lenin thought he should leave, but Stalin is the one who is going to be able to use politics to be able to get himself put into place. There's Trotsky, intellectual. Here's Joseph Stalin. Ha, ha, ha. People underestimate his skill. And there he is, Stalin. Stalin moving forward. Uh, I think we're about to hear. Trotsky is ultimately forced out of the place. He flees, and where are you going to go if you're, if you're him? He goes to Latin America. What the heck? Why would you go to Latin America? Well, Trotsky believes that this is a place that's ripe for socialist ideas, right? All those revolutions that have happened and that just kind of, they've been stuck in quagmire of these weird autocrats and, and such in, in places like Mexico. He thought this is a great place, and rightfully so. I mean, Latin America is going to have a lot of interest in socialism. Well, but that's until, of course, Stalin and his guys show up and they put a nice pick in, in Trotsky's head which means he's done. I mean, Stalin holds grudges. He hated Trotsky. And that's going to put us lastly here, and I'll end here. This is what Russia will now be. I'm sorry, the Soviet Union. This will be a new era. Lenin is gone. Stalin takes over, and he's going to use Lenin as as this mythical founder, and he can do anything he want with Lenin's um, memory, and he now wants people to see him as the great father. A very interesting character that we're going to spend more time talking about what the Soviet Union under Stalin is going to look like a little bit later. But I think we're done. So if there's any time left, enjoy the rest of the uh, video on uh, Vladimir Lenin, and I'll see you guys next class.